Well, hello there, Bride Chillers and Groom Chillers. It is Alicia. I am the host of the Bride Chiller podcast. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it is a 100% free wedding planning podcast that goes out every Monday and Thursday on the iTunes interwebs all the Android ones. I'm not going to name them all, but it is absolutely free. And if you are planning a wedding, then can I suggest you jump on board and be a part of it? Because it is all about planning a stress-free wedding. Today is Q&A Thursday on the podcast, and I thought I would jump on Bride Chiller Live, as I am now calling Facebook Live. I have renamed it to answer some of your wedding planning questions. So if you are going to join me, if you are watching in the replay, whenever you are watching this, make sure you participate in the comments below. I love to see the hearts. I love to see the little thumbs up. And I love hearing your feedback. Most of these wonderful questions I'm uh, going to share with you today have come from Bride Chiller Live sessions where people have jumped on and said, Alicia, can you talk about this or can you talk about that? So I thought we would just jump in straight away and I'm going to share a question with you from Sarah Edwards. Thank you, Sarah. Now, excuse me while I read this from my other screen. It's like the Matrix here. Sarah says, hi. Hey Sarah, uh, any chance you could do a show on creating or buying a good wedding emergency kit? And this is a great question. She's got more to say, but I'm going to stop here so I don't get ahead of myself. If you've never thought about a wedding day emergency kit, it's not doom and gloom. It's actually a very sensible thing that uh, you can put together yourself, although people sell them on Etsy and all this sort of stuff. I'm a big believer in DIY and saving the coins when you can. And a wedding day emergency kit is basically, you can make it out of a bathroom bag, something pretty, but you can chuck in all the things that you may need in case of emergency. Now, this is not a medical emergency. We're not getting drama filled here. This is stuff like uh, band-aids or plasters. If you're in the UK, they might say plasters. You might need them if you are especially can I just say, if you are purchasing a new pair of shoes for your wedding, now this is really obvious, but so many people don't do this, wear them around the house beforehand, give them a bit of an outing, shuffle around, because there is nothing worse than putting on a dead hot sexy pair of heels and then finding yourself wincing every time you walk, especially on your wedding day. You want to dance, you want to have a good time, and uh, I actually think you should be potentially packing another pair of shoes, whether that's a nice pair of ballet flats or a sensible sandal. And when I, say sensi when I say sensible, it doesn't mean they have to be shit. It doesn't mean they have to look like nanas. I mean, find something sexy that if you are wearing a heel, you can just ditch them afterwards and chuck on those shoes because you don't want to be walking around like this or have bleeding feet. I'm not even kidding. Really unfortunate. So plasters, Band-aids, if you are calling them that. Also, I would suggest a little sewing kit as well because you never know when something may fall off, pop, need a bit of fixing. And it's really annoying trying to find that stuff. If you are potentially at a wedding uh, venue out in the sticks, you might not have access to a, a store or a shop. That is one thing to do. Panadol or some sort of painkiller, something that you know that you're not allergic to or will make you go off the show. That is also a really good thing to have on hand. I would say that you would also need some antihistamine. Antihistamine is something uh, that even if you don't have allergies, now this is a real life example. I don't know her personally, but Solange, Beyonce's sister, if you do a quick Google, you will see on her wedding day, unfortunately, she had a bit of an attack of the hives. Now, hives can happen. I'm not a doctor, by the way. I'm a podcast host. So don't take medical advice from me. But hives, for some people, can happen when you're stressed, when you're a bit nervous, when you're feeling a bit flushed, maybe when you've eaten something that you're not used to eating, or you've touched something and rubbed it on your face. Antihistamine is one of those things that you can take and it will usually solve all these sort of minor problems. Also, flowers, springtime, whatever. These are really easy things to add and hopefully you won't need to use any of them. But it's good to be better safe than sorry, I say, when it comes to packing these sort of things. Because then you know that you're organised. And then 
Murphy's Law, as we would say in Australia, 99% positive, you won't need to use any of this stuff and then you can simply just pop it in your bag and forget about it and uh, maybe your bridesmaids will need it, your mother-in-law, who knows. I'm sure there are more things I'm thinking of here. As, as I talk, I'm sure there'll be more things that come to me, but I really think be careful of the shoes, make sure you pack some yeah, plasters, painkillers, antihistamines. Uh, also, it's also good if you are doing a bit of deodorant. This is a tip I've heard lately. Be careful about what sort of deodorant you wear on your wedding day as to how it's going to affect your dress. I'd never thought of that before. Just make sure you purchase the one. I know why I keep touching my underarms. Is that sexy or what? Make sure, I keep doing it because that makes everyone feel comfortable. Make sure you purchase a deodorant that isn't going to sort of wear off on your dress. You don't want anything manky on your wedding dress or suit or tutu, whatever you choose to wear. Okay, Sarah, I'm going to continue with your question. Hello to the people watching. Thank you. If you are new to this experience, I just want to recap. I'm Alicia, host of the Bride Chiller podcast. I'm delighted to be sharing this time with you. Breathe. I've got so much to say. So much to say. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast, it's absolutely free. I mean, what are you waiting for? Sarah says, uh, she says, other things on my list that might give you ideas. She's got one month until her wedding day. She says, sending vendors lists and phone numbers of other vendors and VIP people. This is a really good point. If you don't have a wedding planner or a day of coordinator, it's up to you to get a list together, some sort of spreadsheet, an Excel document, a Google Docs, whatever you prefer to use, that lists all of the important phone numbers, contact details, that means that when you hand that over to whoever's your nominated person, that you can then just hopefully wipe your hands of it. Because the last thing you want to be doing on your wedding day is worrying about silly little details that you could easily be handing over that responsibility to someone that's trustworthy. And that might be a bridesmaid. It's probably going to be a family member uh, that you trust and you know will keep a sound mind and will not be freaking out. I think so many people go, everything's going to be fine, it'll be fine. And then on the day, they spend a lot of time running around and being stressed when necessarily they could have, sorry, they could have easily, uh, you know, fobbed off the responsibility to someone else and actually had a good time. So Sarah, this is a good point. Make sure you're really organized and choose that one responsible person or a couple of responsible people that can chase a florist if the flowers don't turn up or if the wrong cake arrives it's not going to be your problem that is really important she says um uh she says finalizing a wedding day timeline now i've actually done a couple of podcasts about this very topic if you just go to thebridechiller.com and do a little search within my web page it will come up with all of the podcasts that cover this topic and uh, maybe I will devote a whole Bride Chiller Live to this very topic uh, in the near future because it is quite an important one and I wouldn't want to rush it. So look, I'm adding that to my brain. Mm. File of facts, it is there. She also suggests, now this is fantastic and this is one of my favourite things because I use it every day to help you. Now this is very meta. She says, uh, I have signed up and used Trello. That's T-R-E-L-L-O, Trello, to stay organized, and I am so obsessed. She says, so obsessed. T-R-E-L-L-O. Google it. Don't Google it now, but Google it when you finish watching this. She says uh, she would like to share. She says, please let me know if you'd like me to share your lists, my lists with you. And I'm going to write back to you, Sarah, and say yes, because I would like to share them with my crew. Here's what Trello is. And it's hard to explain a computer program just in chatty chats, but here it is. It's basically like an online list where you can add note cards. This is me doing it. I'm acting it out. Note cards underneath uh, a heading and you could say buy flowers and then it lets you put a little tick box and then you can move things around. You can add people to come into the board. You can create uh, links to other things. So it's really good 
to basically keep track of everything and make sure that you can tick things off and then you can archive them. It's all free. And I actually use Trello to organize all of your wedding Q&A questions. My lovely virtual assistant, Jess, manages this amazing board that we have put all of your questions in and then I can move things around and go okay this episode I'm going to answer this question by this person and then I can download your voice messages it's really simple and it's such a good suggestion Sarah for organizing wedding planning stuff it's completely free it's also great because you can add board members so people can jump on if you are sharing information with a vendor if you're sharing information with your partner your in-laws whoever they can jump on and they can see what you're doing and moving it around in real time. And also, as soon as someone moves something or they want to contribute something, you can set notifications. So if someone says, yep, I've ticked that off the list, bam, solved. You can basically see that's been done. They can mark it all sorted over Rover and uh, you are free to do something else with your life. I love Trello and uh, I'm a, a big fan of it and I think Anything that you can choose and find that is going to make your life easier, I'm going to share that with you. That is what I do on the Bride Chiller podcast. It's all about de-stressing, chilling the fuck out, having a nice time, and not letting a wedding, your wedding, not just a wedding, the wedding, as we like to say, take over your life 100%. One thing I do find that people really struggle with the idea of the pressure of trying to keep organized and when you are using systems and programs like Trello you can easily get that stuff done tick it off and then shut the laptop because I think sometimes we become really focused on that and uh, it can be too much hello Auntie Anne my Auntie Anne just joined this is really nice it feels like we're Skyping but she can't talk back but I'm very happy to see you this is exciting Annie Ann is Belinda's mum, and if you've been listening to the Bride Chiller podcast recently, Belinda's my cousin, and she's been uh, featured on a couple of episodes. We are taking a McCormack family holiday slash extravaganza in November to go to Belinda and Luke's Maui wedding. They are getting Maui'd, so cute, and uh, I'm so excited about their big day. If you haven't heard those episodes, they were about a month ago. They're really good because Belinda has lots of very good suggestions as well about wedding planning technology. They have you been using Appy Couple. It's a fantastic app that basically helps you communicate with your guests. You can basically do everything online and Belinda and Luke have set up all the information where I'm using this as my iPhone because my iPhone's recording this, so I can't even show you it. But if you Google it, it's really easy to use. But basically, they have done all their wedding invitations. They can handle all of their RSVPs via this app. They send us little mm. updates that basically sort of give us suggestions about where we can stay in Hawaii, um, what they're going to be doing, because they've got a couple of events that are surrounding the wedding. So it's really good to have the opportunity to connect with your guests in real time. And then when the wedding time comes, Belinda said they're going to do notifications, so they'll be able to send out bulk messages to guests saying, hey, we're all going to head over to this bar for some drinks, or tomorrow's a barbecue, come along, bring a jacket, or whatever. So it's a really great way to connect with guests, and if there are any last-minute requests or changes or anything, you don't need to put 150,000 text messages, numbers into your phone. You just hit the button and you can communicate. I love this idea and uh, it's really great to hear that episode, Belinda, talk about how they've utilized this app because I think they've really pushed it to its limits in a positive way and have had very successful outcomes. So I'm really happy about that. Look, I have to go off. I'm about to do a podcast recording with a lovely lady who is called the Wedding Alchemist. You will hear that in the coming, well, weeks slash months. I'm quite ahead at the moment. So I'm really looking forward to connecting with you. If you are new to the show, make sure you visit thebridechiller.com for more information and you can subscribe to my newsletter to keep in touch. I send lots of valuable information, discounts and bits and pieces out, not very often, just sometimes. And here's the thing, if you have watched this through to the end, I'm gonna throw in a surprise. I would like to give away 
a very special thing and that is a bride chiller cap so if you're watching this in the replay all you need to do is leave a comment on the page suggesting the next topic for me to chat about on bride chiller live and you may win this prize very exciting these are brand new look they're embroidered they're so pretty and I'm so happy to be able to finally share them with you I was gonna put them on my hair but I've got my pretty braids in and I think it would ruin it but that's it you can also purchase if you don't win you can purchase these they're brand new in the bride chiller store you can find the link via my website also if you have a wedding planning question that you would like to be included in the bride chiller podcast all you need to do is go to the bride chiller look at that dot com the hearts instead of the dot because it's prettier and uh, go to the contact page and there's a very easy box you press the button and you can record a voice message for me and it's just like talking to your friend I'm Alicia your virtual bridesmaid and I love to come across a bit of a uh, you know wedding planning conundrum I like to come up with solutions and if I can't find a solution I've got a bunch of wedding planning friends that can hopefully help you out so don't feel shy uh, get on board and join the community if you haven't liked this Facebook page yet do it because there's a bunch of great people on board and it's really nice to see everyone chatting and getting involved and sometimes I have nothing to do with it you all just do your own business and that's really great lots of suggestions about vendors and uh, some people have been it was a great conversation last week about how to include your dog in your wedding day which I thought was just a really gorgeous uh, you know chat that was happening people posting links and yeah it was really fun so get involved and uh, I hope you enjoyed this bride chiller live until next time visit thebridechiller.com have a great day